Hi everyone, this is Elena. Did you enjoy watching the video about spoken and written Korean? This subject is very important, so I think you need to learn more about this. First, I heard this idea from a 12-sentence website developer. So when you go to the website, you can find 12 sentences translated into 7 languages. So it's a Korean sentence building series and I translate 12 simple English sentences into Korean. In particular, it will be translated into spoken and written Korean form respectively. Most Korean textbook and website prefer written form or mixed form because they aim for accuracy. When studying the principle of Korean grammar, the written form is very helpful, but it is not recommended to use it in real conversations because it sounds like a robot. There are so many omissions and abbreviations in spoken language. There will be 15 brand new episodes in this program and it will be uploaded twice a week. And you can check the full daily schedules on my website. Also, you can download PDF files. Now smash the thumbs up buttons and leave the comments down below. Then let's get started. Alright, the first sentence is the apple is red. Spoken form it is 사과가 빨개요. And in a written form, this is 사과가 빨갛다. And when you see the is red in English, in Korean, we just use uh, 빨갛다 as a one word. Then why uh, is red, the two word becomes 빨갛다 as a one word. Alright, so unlike English, Korean uh, adjective uh, mostly have a function like just to describe the subject like a verb. So it can be conjugated with other components like the tense or the, the speaking style or honorifics but to prevent confusion, uh, that kind of Korean adjective, we also call this into descriptive verb, okay? Then what is ka? In Korean, the order of the sentence, components like subject or object, is not very important as in English. Therefore, the subject marker 은는 이가 or the object marker 을를 uh, has been developed to indicate them. Okay, so in this sentence, ka is a subject marker or subject particle. The next sentence is, it is John's apple. Alright, let's check how to say spoken form. 그건 존의 사과예요. And the written form is, 그것은 존의 사과이다. It in Korean is 그것. And uh, this one is another subject particle or subject marker. And when you see this spoken form, it changes into 그건, right? 그건 is the shortened form of 그것은. How? 그거 plus 니은. It, 그것, also 그거. But 그것 is more polite style and more formal style. 그거, this is the spoken style. Next sentence is, I give John the apple. 제가 존한테 사과를 줘요. And the next one is, 내가 존에게 사과를 준다. Okay, so when you see this one, I is used 내가 or 제가. So why there is two different types? So mostly we uh, use 나. 나 is I as a basic form, but when it uh, combined with 가, it becomes 내가. But when you use this 나 with 는, that's just 나는. Okay? But as a spoken form, uh, especially with the 아유 어유 ending, we use 저. 저. So 저 here is combined with uh, 가, it becomes 제가. Okay? And this one, Hante uh, are particles used when giving something to someone. So this is like to. Both ege and hante are particles used when giving something to someone. 
but in spoken style, we mostly use hante, but in written form, we use ege a lot. Next, we give him the apple. 우리가 그 남자한테 사과를 줘요. And the written form is 우리가 그에게 사과를 준다. Here, the thing is him. We mostly translate it in 그. But you have to keep in mind we don't use 그 in a conversation. No one say 그 in a conversation because this is only for written form, okay? So you can see 그 in the book title or in your diary, not in your diary, maybe my diary. Daily conversations, that's 그 남자 or 그 사람, that person. So 사람 means person and 그 남자, it means that man. The next sentence is he gives it to John. Okay, so we know what is he, right? 그 남자가 존한테 그걸 줘요. He is 그 남자 in spoken form and in a written form, 그가 존에게 그것을 준다. And what about this one? 그것을 준다. 그것 become 그거. And then here, 을, final consonant, 리을. So when these two combined, it just became 그걸 as abbreviations, shortened form of 그것을. Okay? The next one is 쉬. 쉬 gives it to him. Okay. 그 여자가 그 남자한테 그걸 줘요. Written form is 그녀가 그에게 그것을 준다. Like he before, translation of she is 그녀. But in spoken style, 그 여자. 그 여자 is that woman. And like I said, 그 사람. You can use 그 사람 as well. And this means that person. Is the apple red? The spoken form is 사과가 빨개요? And the written form is 사과가 빨갛나? In a written form, I use 빨갛나? And this 나 is the special ending uh, for the, the questions. Number eight is the apples are red. 사과가 빨개요? 사과가 빨갛다? We know what is apple, but what about apples? Apples and apple in English is different, but in Korean, there is no different. Uh, we also have the suffix to make sure plural nouns like 들, my friends 하면 친구들, or people 하면 사람들. But in particular, it is very awkward to use 들 for the object other than people. If you just say 사과 들, this sounds very awkward. All right, the next sentence is, I must give it to him. 전, 그 남자한테 그걸 줘야 돼요. 나는 그에게 그것을 줘야 한다. I is 나 or 전 here. So like before, 나는 become 전 as honorific form combined with 저 plus 니은. So this is shortened form of 저는. So you can say 저는 is okay, but I wanted to show you abbreviations for the spoken language. So we mostly say 전. All right, so 줘야 한다 and 줘야 되다 has the same meanings, must give. But I uh, translate it into 줘야 돼요. It comes from 줘야 되다. And the, here's the things. Uh, the National Korean institutions recommend to use 줘야 한다. But I just wanted to show you the real commonly used form, okay? We use 되다 more. But if you want to know how to make 줘야 한다's spoken style, that is 줘야 해요. Number 10, I want to give it to her. So how to say that in Korean? 전그 여자한테 그걸 주고 싶어요. And the second one, written form is 나는 그녀에게 그것을 주고 싶다. So here you can see 주고 싶다, 주고 싶어요. But maybe some of you know want is 원하다. But if you use 원하다 here, it sounds very awkward. This is like just translated form from English. Sometimes it is used in the music lyrics because they want to give the very strong impact. But in the real conversation, we use 고 싶다. Please practice 고 싶다 more, okay? 
Next, I'm going to know tomorrow. 내일 알게 될 거예요. And the next one is 내일 알게 될 것이다. So here, the thing is, there is no subject in Korean, right? It feels more natural to omit the subject in this sentence. Uh, in situation where the subject is clear, referring to the subject seems to be very unnatural and awkward in Korean. So regardless of conversation or written style, so I just omit the subject. And in this 12 sentence, I uh, mostly translated I or he or she a lot. That's because uh, that's not a conversation. But in a real conversation, we normally know who is I and who is you. In that situation, the omitting the subject is much more natural than you use it all the time. Number 12, I can't eat the apple. In Korean, 전 사과 못 먹어요. 나는 사과를 못 먹는다. Then here is the object particle, but here there is no object particle. Yeah, like I said, in spoken language, there are so many omittings and also used uh, lots of abbreviations. And here, uh, the object particle is normally uh, deleted in the spoken language. So I just make it natural like this. And I have one more sentence. I don't know why, uh, but the 12 sentence developer made 13 sentence. This is kind of bonus sentence uh, to make sure the tense, okay? That is, I have eaten the apple. Okay, how to say that in Korean? 전 사과 먹었어요. 나는 사과를 먹었다. 먹었다 is a past tense. There are only three major tenses in Korean. So present, past, future. Therefore, the present complete tense is expressed in the past tense in Korean. Okay, that's it. I'll upload today's material. So download them and review. Then I'm gonna see you the next time. Annyeong!